Complete Works is a, an unusual project for us in that it involves us picking up a kind of found cultural object, um, which is not something that we normally do. And in this case, it's a it's a big cultural object, and it, it's from theatre, which is again really unusual. Um, and the object is all of the plays of Shakespeare. Pericles, Taser, get married to the delight of King Simonides. And on the night of their wedding, um, they conceive a child and uh, everyone's very happy. And the months go by and Taser is expecting to give birth very soon. So King Simonides appoints a nurse to take care of the baby when it comes. And everyone is looking forward to the birth when um, there, there's a visitor. And what we do in the project is we, we work on versions of all of the plays. Um, each of them is narrated by, told by one of the six performers in the company for this project. And they do a kind of summary retelling of the plot of the play using everyday objects on the tabletop uh, as stand-ins for the characters. So uh, Nerissa and Portia hide behind a curtain to observe the uh, suitors and they come from all over, from Scotland, from Germany, France, Italy and England. And the suitors peruse the caskets. And the other thing we do with these stories is to, to make them very small. Uh, two and a half hours down to 50 minutes, 40 minutes with some of them. And a small space. You know, we were, we were doing them in uh, these small, tiny theatres. And now... You could be watching this sitting on your sofa uh, in bed. You could be on the bus watching it on your phone. So there's a there's a, there's this drive to make this tiny thing happen, to make this tiny moment happen. And all these tiny people that are just things that you you pull off the shelf, whether it's the, you know the bathroom shelf or the pantry shelf or some old objects that you thought you were going to give away because you didn't really think they were beautiful anymore. But somehow these objects become really important. We're presenting these pieces from the homes of the performers. So they're sat at their own kitchen tables or in their own spare rooms or you know their own dining tables trying to tell the story of each of the plays in turn. Watching all of this go on is Puck. And he thinks that these people are the biggest bunch of idiots that he's ever seen in his entire life. And he decides that he is going to play a trick on them. So just as the rehearsal is about to start, they, they kind of draw a little stage uh, on the forest floor and they all take their positions and Nick Bottom goes and hides behind a bush so that he can make a dramatic entrance onto the stage and while he's hiding behind the bush Puck puts a spell on him and he transforms Nick Bottom into a creature with the head of a donkey. There's a big dynamic in the project uh, of, I guess, high culture, uh, the Shakespeare plays, meets the sort of um, everyday banality, ordinariness of the objects. So in the plays, um, a coffee cup or a salt and pepper pot or a box of matches might be asked to stand in for for Hamlet or for Juliet or for Ophelia and 
what you get there is this sort of in a way comical collision of uh, the lowly objects and these rather grand uh, rather special stories that are at the heart of those Shakespeare plays you feel like you have to be kind of quite kind to the these little objects that are that are in the plays uh, and you have to even even with the ones that are kind of evil and uh, I don't know cunning uh, you you have to allow them to have their own integrity it almost becomes like your job to sort of look after all of them and I suppose in that sense uh, when I'm presenting them I'd, I'd, I'd like to feel that uh, I'm not really um, I'm not really telling you what I think about them uh, I'm trying to let them have a life of their own uh, and there's a certain pleasure in that because when you tell the story you find yourself surprised by the fact that this one is 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 feeling something and it asks you as a teller to put yourself slightly in the shoes of this ridiculous little avatar who's uh, who's standing in for a character there's something in the project of a gesture that's something like taking the engine out of a car and laying all the pieces down on the ground so you can sort of start to understand what it is and how it works and that's in a way one of the things that we've done here with the Shakespeare's in the sense that what's exposed is the plot mechanisms it's the it's the the mechanics of build-ups and uh, dilemmas and choices and events and the kind of structures that Shakespeare's always using they become hugely visible in this kind of rather playful uh, but nonetheless kind of schematic uh, version of, of the plays. And Prospero says that in order to be released from the island he needs the audience's help and he says that he needs the audience to clap in order to break the spell. And the last thing that happens is that the audience clap and Prospero bows and leaves. And finally, the stage is empty. <laughs>